we are talking about teaming with microbes. Um, the organic gardener's guide to the soil food web. And is written by Jeff Lowen Falls, I think that's how you pronounce it, and, and Wayne Lewis. But Wayne Lewis, I couldn't actually find him. I did do a research of who was uh, Jeff and his, his um, background is actually impressive. Um, he is a lawyer, and, but he is also a geologist and he studied in Harvard. And um, and all of this, like he got interested in gardening because I think his dad had a also like a hobby of gardening, and he just loved gardening. And it just happened that he, you know, he had to study. I mean, what a combination, right? Like geology, and then <laughs> and then lawyer. And now he is, uh, he writes like um, for a gardening column. So he's won like awards for uh, being a writer. Uh, and he writes, about, he's kind of like an activist. He writes mm -hmm. about uh, climate change and because he, he knows all the background of how, um, you know, the microbes are so important in sequestering um, carbon in the air and so well, it sounds like a good com combination uh, you know as an, uh, to be eloquent as an attorney and the training with uh, an oration and being able to speak well but also research kind of goes hand in hand with a geologist right and if you're going to go into the soil and talk about the microbes <laughs> i know right good combination <laughs> there mm -hmm. yeah um, and also he, I think he, he's, he has a few videos and he, he's, um, I don't know if he has a podcast, but I was listening to a podcast where he was being interviewed and he was very interesting. So I don't know how far you got into the book, John, but I know you read uh, several chapters already. Yeah. So, so far, what, what did you find that uh, you found interesting? Because I know you're going to continue reading the book, but um... yeah, I'm going to continue reading the book. I found it really fascinating the the different levels of um, well, first of all, I did the audio book so that I could walk around and keep, you know keep going with life, and I could accelerate um, the speed so I can interpret it and, and ingest it. My brain thinks faster than I can read with my eyes, and. I find that when I read with my eyes, it's putting me to sleep. So I found this really cool biohack to be able to do this so I can <laughs> take information <laughs> in. And uh, so I uh, I got about a third of the way through the book. Um, and I just started it yesterday, but I'm going to go on with it. it. I think what's fascinating is the different levels of biomes, the way they all work together and just how they interplay and, and build off each other or in are they all this big web, you know? Um, and then uh, how certain, when you bring in certain things, how it affects them and tilts that ecosystem, you know? The, I just found that really fascinating. I saw a lot, I put together a lot of uh, connections with Clostridia and strep and fungi and you know, I know, yeah. right? Did you find like the same? Like I found that, uh, like I, I find that it's very similar to the gut. Yeah, what fascinates me, right? Because, um, you know, is this interaction and this balance yep. that having a diverse ecosystem, um, you know, you get beautiful plants and then. And then it'll feed us, so then we'll get a beautiful um, digestive microbiome. What I thought was really cool too was, um, did you catch the thing about the color of the soil? <laughs> but just at a glance, by looking at the color, you knew what it, it had in it or didn't have in it. I thought yeah. that was fascinating. I love learning little packs like that. Right, and what about the smell as well? Yes, and how important like, that is. How important it is. And, and like uh, that's one of the determinants to see like if your compost smells good, like it smells fresh, or if it's gone bad, then 
your whatever if you if it's your um your the imbalance tea, right uh -huh, yeah. will smell bad so by it's like our senses as well i think we have evolved to um you know to know what what is good or what is bad yeah because of these gases that bacteria and all the microbes yeah. Um, so if you got, get the really hardy ones, then you'll get all these gases produced in, in Just your, like in uh, us, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Propionic, yeah. yeah, like all the different... Um, yeah, if you get a ammonia. stinky breath, yeah, yeah. you know, if you, um, if you get a stinky gas... Or people know, acting or like they're inebriated, they actually are. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Oh my gosh, micro blooms or or it can just wreak havoc with somebody just because they ate something and and they don't even know that it's happening. They can and it can manifest in so many different ways with the gut. They can be sleepy or mm -hmm. they can act kind of goofy and uh, laughing or they can be have autonomic dysfunction where they have heart rate and uh, blood pressure issues. Can lead yeah. to POTS. There's so many different avenues it can express. Uh, that, that depending are, on the metabolites that yes. their microbes are secreting, depending on what you yeah. feed them, yep, which is very similar to the soil. But then there was this part which I really loved, which uh, he talked about the ectomycorrhizal fungi and the endomycorrhizal fungi. I think I'm going I'm pronouncing it properly, but I mean he talked about all kinds of um, kingdoms and, yeah. um, you know, diversity, like you get the, um, you know, you get the bacteria and then you get the archaea and then you get the, el the helminths, like the, the worms, right, which are so important to the soil. Yeah, and it's sort of a, is that what he was talking about, something going from like the large down to the minuscule kind of size wise and how they all feed off of and support each other in that food web? Right, right, yeah, and, and how like if you when he right and when he said um, if you find worms in your soil, this means your soil is fertile and healthy. Right, be, because there has been a preview. So for the worms to be there, there has to be a lot of other microbes that have to be present yeah. before the worms are there because the worms feed on the other the smaller microbes right so which brings to oxygen to, be, to the soil right yeah and yeah. and aerates it and that's important too yes and then um yeah so i it was fascinating and i love the fact that he brought the whole thing together like like, like we're talking about right like right. it's just not one thing it's like this whole ecosystem and system. how it works yeah system and how it works in harmony with um with you know with the soil it's about the balance minerals. yeah mm -hmm. and then as well so what what it really um impressed me was uh, about the ectomycorrhizal fungi because what um he said is that um because we think of fungi, when we talk about the gut, we talk about candida and how fungus is so bad for you. And yes, like there are some very pathogenic uh, fungi, but there's also this beneficial microbiome that we have in our, in our guts. And so we also have a microbiome that serves a purpose. And, but when this microbiome goes in balance, and your immune system, you know, is down, then you get colonized by the more pathogenic fungi, which was right. exactly the same thing he was mentioning with the soil. Yes. Um, he's talking about this ectomycorrhizal fungi, which um, what it does is like, it's like a blanket that surrounds, you know, it grows, the hyphas grow, and, and then it surrounds the roots completely like a blanket. So other, um, you know, microbes, they don't, they can't get to the roots and they can't eat and, you know, dissolve their roots. So then, then you get a beautiful, um, you know, uh, whatever veggie, like an onion or like a... So it's a protective barrier. 
yeah, like a protective barrier. But but there was something really interesting that he said in his post podcast. He didn't know why, but there are some vegetables that they don't. They actually don't do. I mean, they don't grow this um, this ectomycorrhizal fungi because, uh, and those were the broccoli, the cabbages, the um, you know the uh, cauliflower. Um, and he said, well, I'm not sure why, but you're not supposed to plant them beside this, you know, near your other, your other foods that do need the micro, the, uh, the ectomycorrhizal fungi. You have to have them separate. So I thought that was very interesting. Yeah, that is. I, sure. I'm, I'm sure a lot of avid farmers know about that. And, and also combining, I, I remember my husband talking about um corn and planting certain vine plants at the base of it and it creates this there's this diversity different nutrients and you're able to utilize the space the farming space mm -hmm. so like pumpkins under a or gourds under um um, um, um corn rows of corn that's very interesting because pumpkins there is this, and he was talking about this in his podcast, not in the book, but in the podcast, he was saying like, there's this festival about the biggest pumpkin. Have you heard of the festival? The biggest pumpkin, sure. Yeah. yeah. I think because in Alaska, don't they? Yeah, because he is actually, he actually lives in Alaska. Well, okay. And so I think he might have done a lot of work with this um, ectomycorrhizal fungi there. So a lot of people know about this. And um and this is what they use. They use the fungi. They, I mean, besides, I guess, I don't know what else they, they do to grow the fungi, but, but one of the things they do use is the fungi. So they can actually grow huge pump. Uh, okay, tell me the name of this fungi again. Okay, it's ecto. And, and I, I put it in my, uh, in my notes. Uh -huh. uh, so actually, I could open my notes. And I'm going to share them anyways in the group. Okay. Uh, but um, I think I, I spelled it wrong. It. I put down ectomycel. I just so, wondered how you were saying. It. So it's ecto. Is e or e? Ecto, yeah, ecto. It's e c t o m y c o double r r h i z a l. Oh, rhizols. Yeah, rhizols. Did I put that? Yeah. Yeah, it's, I've heard that that term used with plants and like with herbs. Rhizoles are a, a, it's like a, yeah, okay, um, that makes sense. I thought you were saying something else, my hear, my hearing. Um, hmm, okay. Yeah. And that, what's, you know, what I thought of is, you know how there are people that have a failure, like, th to thrive, and they're, mm -hmm. they're petite or young or, no, not young. They're, um, they're small, and, and uh, they have to give them growth hormones, that type of thing. Yeah yeah right <laughs> I was like, yeah mm -hmm. yeah there is yeah there is an imbalance maybe in, in and, and the you know there was, a time, there was a time when uh crops bugs animals were much bigger mm -hmm. in the past long long time ago yeah like the you mean like like oh, the uh uh, uh, like uh, dinosaurs <laughs> right right, right. Dinosaurs. so i'm thinking about like bugs and dinos and and plants so the plants were big um mm. they were really and i think that had to do with the level of oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange was just different mm -hmm. also the water tables were there were more water tables in the ground that were higher so when things grew they had constant water as opposed to needing rainfall mm. kind of like the way the aztecs farmed i think mm. That's a little, sorry, that was like a little rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> um, but they, they did this thing, I think it was the Mayans or the Aztecs, where they floated their gardens because they didn't have a lot of uh, land. So they created these, it was a lot of water around them. So they created these floating little islands and then they planted their crops on these islands and then they floated them. Yeah, and you, we still have them in Mexico. Is we there a still... name for those? Yeah, uh, they're called chalupas. Okay. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, and that's exactly what what they are. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, so in, um, another thing uh, that it was interesting is that um, there are other, other types. So, so, so there is like, a, um, there is like the bacteria dominated um, kingdom of plants and the fungi dominated kingdom of plants. Yes. So, and then the bacteria would be all like the trees, um, you know, and then, and then the vegetables would be more bacteria dominated than fungi, but they do have, they do need some of them. That's the, probably a reason factor too for planting things with or, or away from, right? Yeah. And then you've also yeah. got the alkaline and phosphorus and like all the different balances of the soils. Mm -hmm. That was yeah. that, that thing I found very fascinating. Like there was, um, if it was dark purpley soil, it had high levels of, I want to say chrome, chromium or something in it, right? Um, mm -hmm. it, it was, um, and then if it was gray, it was devoid of all nutrients. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think about when you're in a plane and you're flying over the land and you're, you look at the farmlands, uh, rural areas, and it's these different patchworks of different colors, the, the soil. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then you can see, right. You could literally, he could tell what, without even looking or testing, he could just tell by looking what mm -hmm. nutrients were in there. Yeah, that's fascinating. Um, and also like the importance of um, the importance of knowing that um, you know because like the easy way this is what he said this is I think the the most important thing I got from the book is you can obviously you can grow food without soil like hydroponics for example right um but you know you 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 would have to provide um like the nutrients, nutrients mm -hmm. yeah constantly to, for, for them they, they cannot grow without you providing the nutrients but you know but but the nutrients naturally they should be provided by the environment and these nutrients are provided by the um, symbiosis of the microbiome of the soil. And what he's saying is like, okay, yeah, sure. Like you can use, you know, your nitrogen, your fertilizers, which, uh, you know, they would just provide the soil with all the, um, you know, the nitrogen, the, uh, the phosphorus, right? And, but it shouldn't be because B vitamins, using, calcium, there's all these, yeah, just what we need, yeah. like literally what we have in us and we need and depend on. Right. And when you're providing this in, in just one large amount, like let's say you're providing a lot of nitrogen, you will, they will grow, but um, you're also creating an imbalance and this imbalance will kill a lot of microbes. Um, on top of that, you're adding pesticides. So you're killing your microbiome. And as a result, you're having an, an imbalanced soil that um, will need for you to keep adding more stuff because now it can produce it on its own. So then it actually needs you. And yeah. then every time you're adding more nutrients on their own, um, every time you're depleting that soil more and more and more. So what he's saying, he's suggesting, okay, let's say that you have to use for some reason, like he's like he never uses it, but let, let's say you decide to use it for some reason once, right? Well, like be sure that you're going to recover all your microbiome, that you're adding your, you know, that you're doing your um, tea compost, that you're doing your, um, you are adding the, the fungi into the into the roots of, of the plants that you're gonna do. You're recovering the microbiome. Yes. Which I think is um, I mean it's a science in itself, isn't it? Yeah. I mean it's a this just like a you'd have to go to school to like learn about the I mean, I don't know, maybe not. Maybe there's an easy way to test this 
on a, you know, they have some kind of a kit already in, in places where you nurseries or wherever that you could test yeah, the so, soil to figure out what the imbalance is and so he, what he, to plant where based on your you know, right, zone so, and all that. So he gives us a lot of, um, a lot of, um, uh, citations here and he gives us as well the labs where you can actually because he does recommend to do to perform a lab test uh, so you actually know what why you're missing and um, what's the you know the level of dysbiosis of your soil um, but something also I found very interesting and this is related to climate change since he's also a um, you know, a climate activist, and because of the loss of microbial um, life that we are, uh, you know, also decimating with our practices, right? Um, something I found interesting was that one of the biggest causes of, um, um, you know, uh, gases in the atmosphere is produced by rice because of the specific uh, microbes uh, that produce the uh, gases. And I remember him saying something about, we thought it was methane, but it's actually more methane is produced by prokaryote. Am I saying this right? In the, in the ocean? Uh, or is it the, is it the like, uh, phytoplankton? I can't remember what he said now. So it's in the ocean that's actually producing more, oh, but it's, it's almost like an cyanobacteria. Yes, cyanobacteria. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It produces more methane than actual, like any land animals, right? Right, and they um, they are overgrown now because of the amount of nutrients, you know, running from our agricultural um, areas to the sea. So that's also a problem. So they are actually overfeeding so it's a lot of food for them and they're growing so quickly is that when we start seeing bark. things like micro bloom oops red algae and that sort of thing mm -hmm. uh in certain yeah. regions it'll just like be this huge bloom like it'll blue turn algae the water. and red algae mm -hmm. yeah 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 yeah. yeah, from grown-ups, um, yeah. yeah, that's very interesting. And then, and and you know, um, he didn't talk a lot about, uh, you know, well, everybody knows right now and is uh, agriculture, but uh, he did talk about, because I feel like we are um, trying to quiet, you know, some area where we think most of the, problem is coming from which is agriculture which it is right but there is also another area which is also uh, i mean i'm talking about meat right meat versus plants like mm -hmm. you know because those are our main foods like we eat very plants which is like called our carbs and our veggies and then or we eat meats mm -hmm. and like mostly um the debate is like the meats are causing the biggest impact in climate change but he also says it's not only that the problem is the real problem is the microbes is is really the loss of microbial right. ecosystem and if that were rebalanced right if that were yeah so it's, not, it's sort of like our in, insides like if we had the right microbiome balance we probably would not be having as much immune and inflammation issues that we're having and nutrient right. depletions. So it's not only about, you know, becoming a vegan yeah. or a vegetarian or becoming like plant-based or carnivore. Like, you know, it's not about going one side or the other, unless you have a specific, you know, um, metabolism problem that you need to have a right. specific, you know, way of eating. But again, um, begin is that based on you know, your microbiome loss of diversity. Yes, right. And yeah, so it, it's not just about becoming, um, you know, one side or the other, like, oh, now I'm going to stop completely eating meat because meat is what's causing. Well, guess what? Rice is also one of the main 
yeah. uh, problems of climate you know change and uh so what do you do you stop eating rice you stop eating meat you stop eating everything or or i think my idea or what, what his idea is like no like let's use regenerative farming like you know and rotate your food so don't eat always the same thing as well. well there was like, a point where our ancestors would only eat seasonal foods because of crops because that's all they could get they didn't have right. refrigeration and the storages were minimal if any so they might have had storehouses if they were smart but otherwise they just lived day to day and if they found whatever that was around them is what they ate right so you did eat seasonally yeah mm -hmm. And there might be a reason for it and, and 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 on a bigger scale like it could help if we if we ate a certain way in the winter time and then we eat different in the summer our body has a different input and output of uh, needs for keeping cool or keeping warm so we would eat differently i, I mean i could see that so right. and also providing i mean eating what's in your environment yep um like that's another thing right oh then there was another very embarrassing thing that is that they you know there's not only ectomycorrhizal which ecto means outside so the fungi is outside the roots but it, there is also endomycorrhizal which the endomycorrhizal is the fungus that it's actually invading the cellular invading the cell of the plants and that's yeah. also a beneficial um way yeah. of the plant to get the nutrients across like almost yeah. like a straw yeah to uh, get uh, like a hypha right yeah in the fungi get, hypha yeah uh-huh but it's it's um it's incredible how like adapt and yeah getting it almost infect no i mean inoculated or infected your cells well, not, not no, as it we as a, humans, uh, but I no, guess, no, no, yeah. Sorry. I know what you're saying. It's almost like... Um, like a mitochondria. Mm -hmm. And and it's a, oh, what do they call it? When it's um, commensal. It benefits yeah. both, right? Yeah, yes. It benefits, um, yeah. And it benefits the plant as well. Yeah, it's commensal. And it's uh, it's actually beneficial, unless he said... There's different different strains on every plant. Like orchidias have their own um, their own strains, but basically, for most of it, uh, what it does is literally like a straw. Like the plant would suck the nutrients uh, from a, a little farther away, instead of only sucking the nutrients locally. Um, that's what I took of. It, that reminds me of the, the trees in the forest, how they uh, all are connected. And if one comes down with a disease, they'll cut that plant off and stop, they'll, they'll block the tubular connections mm -hmm. so that they don't get that disease. And they, they sort of innately know that and do it. That's so mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, right? Yeah, because that's how they communicate as well. Mm -hmm. So, okay, it says here, given the scale of rice farming around the globe, this is a serious contribution. Methane levels um, have increased. Methane or methane? Methane, right? Methane, methane. Le mm -hmm. methane, methane levels have increased by about 150% since 70, 1750. And it has been suggested that 10 to 25% of the methane emissions worldwide come from the activity of methanogenic archaea, uh, which uh, are tremendous significant amounts. Um, yeah, so because of rice also has the bacteria, the archaea that produces the methane. So it's not the cows that is pretty i mean the breathing of the cows but it's actually the actual um archaea and bacteria that produce the gases and that if you leave you know if they defecate and you leave the um all the bacteria out to the air and it's not sequestered inside the soil right it's a different thing that these gases 
you know, go on the air is completely different than if, if, the, if the poop was buried inside the soil. And, yes. And, and I've, we, seen, I've seen documentaries where they say that it's actually the soil depletion of microbes mm -hmm. that normally helps with that breakout down, which mm -hmm. is what needs to be addressed as opposed to trying to, you know, it's again, it's, it's where the attention is focused, I think. Yeah. Um, and maybe a shift of attention or different perspectives, additional perspectives need to be looked at. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's so far, it's been a really insightful. Mm -hmm. uh, in a small, in the, in the, what do I wanna say, nano sort of way, a nano look at this <laughs> view. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, there is uh, much more to farming and to food yeah. But um, this this book was definitely really good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I, I am enjoying it. I'm looking forward to finishing it. Great. Thank you, Joan. Thank you Thank for you. Uh, coming and chatting with me about the book. You're so, welcome. Yeah, Thank you for so, having me. It was. I'm glad you're doing these things. Yes. I'm enjoying this. Thank you, Joan. So this is uh, the Microbiome Book Club, and we are reading Teaming with Microbes. Um, and this is Joan and Adriana. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.